Hello and welcome back to the Discraft, Discraft Presents March Mayhem in November. Due to COVID, we had to reschedule to now. We're here at Garfield Park in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Super excited to be here on this beautiful day. And on the commentator's mic with me, I have RJ Santala. How you doing, RJ? I'm doing pretty all right. Super excited. Thanks again to all the sponsors uh, for this particular event. To continue to make more great Michigan disc golf tournaments, it's always great to come out here and see the pros play in. And just everyone, in fact, not just the pros. And taking a look at our front nine scores here. Lots of green there. Uh, Luke really with the one hiccup, but made a nice recovery there. Yep. And he's right there in the mix. Yeah, I mean, he had the most birdies on the front nine, right? I mean, he only missed, what, two, three holes? Yeah, he's tied with Marweed for the most... Uh, birdies as we head into uh, hole 10 here par 3 291 feet really just throwing a backhand hyzer or a forehand it's pretty straight either way just trying to gap these two trees here or trying to get into the initial gap give yourself a putt at it this is michigan golf oh yeah at least it's at the very end and not the whole way yeah i agree it is, essentially is you just throw it up there kind of by the basket and you hope it doesn't hit a tree He throwing his sex and firebird looks like kind of a flippy one yeah it's his uh number two firebird i rate his so if i ever say that in case you weren't and that looked like an ace run 100 percent. did it oh yeah. yeah the uh so the way i discuss marweed's firebirds is one through five where one is his flippiest and five is his most mm -hmm. overstable his five is that purpley pink one yeah um and yeah, then he's got a sick. pink one that's his four and so on and so forth and that was his number two i'm pretty sure rock with from Ian he throws a lot of rocks yep you like deciding between rock get through there miss it good Ooh. shot and we had two back to back ace runs there which on a whole I wouldn't necessarily expect an ace run just cause this is a tough one I think you'd almost have to skip it in for it to go in yeah. cause it, I think the, that that tree in front of the basket kind of covers it up pretty nice unless really you swing well. in swing in with a lot of angle I don't and I don't know if that angle's open enough or not but I think you're right you just this one's kind of it plays a little longer I remember the first time Mm -hmm. Well, the 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 T sign, I think it says it's only two forty. I'm almost yeah. It, so if I, well, the first time I played this, I uh, a practice round. I threw my putter pretty hard, and I was way short. And then I threw a mid range kind of hard, and it was still way short. So it does make sense that this is two ninety one. It does play. And it's I'd say uphill. right around three hundred. It is a little bit uphill as well. Not yeah, much. The, the the uphill definitely takes a little bit off. That's a really good shot from e or from Noah. Sorry. Marby to try to keep this hot streak going, try to keep the lead on the card mates here. Really high and good putt. Yep. Nice and low. And these baskets, like you had mentioned earlier in the previous, uh, on the front nine, that these baskets on a low spot's really good. Part of that reason is these baskets are very deep. Mm -hmm. And it's hard that once the once the disc gets underneath that rim level, yeah. it's really hard for it to get out of that. Yeah, I mean, you'll the, so these ones are weird. I'd say that these are the best overall baskets, but... Um, I have seen some pullouts. So as far as hitting the pole and then bouncing mm -hmm. straight back into your face, those always feel the worst because you really can't putt it much better by hitting the pole. But as long as you're low in the center-ish area, these should catch. Like that one. Yeah, I think the only time I ever see a pole, if you kind of see that duct tape level on the basket right there, mm -hmm. is if you're hitting that Yeah, that's kind that of that height. weird spot, yeah. Because yeah. that's really where you're aiming. Or at least that's where I'm aiming, is I'm aiming dead center. Um, and that's like a really good star frame on this hole. This one can get some people. Yeah, for you see sure. Some rollaways or anything like that. Yeah, actually, surprisingly, this actually played as the easiest hole in the day, which I would what? not have expected really? at all. Yeah, I think everyone in the field except one person birdied it. I don't mean to make that person feel bad who knows who they are, but I, I don't know who it, it is. It wasn't me, right? It was not you. Okay, thank God. Uh, hole 11, 220, um, I'm sorry, 229 feet. This is the one of the harder holes just because of yeah, the sheer luck that. factor. Yeah, I could see that. It, it really is. Um, so first round I threw, I think, like a putter, and it was a little long. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to throw a low skip shot the second round. And it, it just is one of those holes where you either – yeah, you hit a tree like that, even though you threw it like you wanted to, or you just you get you get lucky down there. It, it really is one of those holes. It does play relatively well at almost uh, 0.8 under par. So I mean, a lot of people are birdieing it this round. That's but I mean, shot. it just like you had mentioned, it, it feels like you're supposed to birdie it, but you can just find yourself taking a C2 look or worse if you're off by just a little bit. Yep, it's it's one of those holes for sure. It's This is pretty much as close as you're going to get to like a Michigan hole. That's a good little reaction off that tree from Luke. Yep, he'll have a putt from there. And this looks like a gator. I think he throws gators for these shots. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. A little bit of yeah, flex. Yeah, that is. It's just so overstable. It's, just, it's crazy. Yep, that's a good shot, too. Yep. And that's going to be... Uh, I think the longest happened. one we got is Andy. Yep, he, it looks like he came up a little short. Just outside circle. Yep. Ding. Wow. He almost took a bite out of that. I think he forgot that that putter wasn't a cookie. He took, almost <laughs> took a bite out of his putter. <laughs> Needed a snack to make himself feel better. Yeah. Those ones always feel the worst from the circle two that hit the band. Cause yeah. They, always, they look so good. The whole way there. That was a good putt from Luke. Got a little bit of a comeback from Ian. Shouldn't be any problem. Nope. And then I think no, it was pretty much parked, right? Yeah, yeah. he's right next to this tree. He's just got to step out a little bit. Luckily for him, it's five feet away. Yep. I don't want to say it, but you know he's been putting pretty good today with his Lunas. I know he must have just recently switched because he's been playing. He's been putting P2s, with those P twos yeah. all year. And then we got my boy Austin Hawks catting for for Andy. Yeah, he was on the wait list but couldn't quite sneak in for today, which is okay. But wait, at least he's going to be around for us today. Headed into hole 12, par 3, 261 feet. Um, the OB is actually from where you're standing on the tee pad. Is, you're in OB. You have to get right. it over the road. It's like into an the, island, kind of. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to describe, I guess. It's weird. It's Minnesota. all OB on the right side until you get over the line. line. That's an interesting line for me. And a lot of people just go with forehand because you're... Mm -hmm. It's easier to commit your shot too far to the left and miss left than it is to commit a back end because there's a lot more open space towards the left. So this is this is the play I think is the most common. It's kind of like a little bit of a baby flex with a forehand, and that's a pretty good shot from Luke. I mean, it's a little it's a little bit shorter than he wanted to be, but we so. have Noah here going with a forehand as well. Like you said, this is a smart play here where you're trying to go extra wide on that left side because that's the you know if we're mistaking here. Had an unfortunate slip, bangs his knee. Did he bang his knee? Yes, he does. He actually, Get in it. Yeah, that's. We all said the same thing as soon as he threw it. I said, "Okay, go in, like KJ." That, like that, yeah, that Kevin Jones. <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. go in. And he's throwing a pick, which is kind of like I. Would, this one just looks like it just plays for perfect for his little kind of flippier Firebird. That's a long ways for a pig, I'd say. And even though that's a miss on the inside of those trees, that's honestly fine. There is a gap on the yeah. right side, perfectly set up for that putt. Of course, yeah. What did I say at the beginning? Luckiest player in Michigan, of course. <laughs> Good putt from Luke. If that's the longest putt, then Andy is quite a bit closer than I thought he was. You can see there's a stump there, so there used to be a tree there. I'm not sure if they cut it out on purpose just when they designed. Andy. They just just for Andy. Just Andy. They heard he was going to throw it there today, so they cut it down yep. real quick, got yep. rid that's of the what logs. I heard. Yeah. Wow, that's some. That's a really dedicated ground screw out yeah, there. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I hope Marweed's paying him a little extra. Yeah, and just remember that if it, if he wins by one stroke, just remember that shot right there. <laughs> yeah, and in. Noah, after drilling his knee, did he hit it on the cement? Yeah. So he put his knee. He landed oh. his knee on the cement. Was able to keep and his he's balance. Shorts too. Yeah, he Ouch. he scabbed his knee up a little bit there. He's bleeding a little bit, but he's gonna be okay. Uh, heading into hole 13 now, 279 feet here. This one has a little more danger than it looks like off the tee. You have a bunch of these short trees around the basket, and if you leave it too low, they're really, really grabby. This court, this hole is going to be a pain in the butt when these trees grow in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's already kind of tough, especially even right now with the leaves being gone, it's kind of tough. Because you really, you can't, I tried to throw a backhand low, and it, it is, it's a tougher line. I think the way th this is just going to be a forehand hole eventually. Yeah, I think the you'll see a lot of these guys throw forehand holes right now. Um, if you throw it high and really wide, it'll still get over those trees and get itself inside circle one. So I think we see Luke here. This is looking really good. That's pretty much what you want to do. Yeah, yep. that's that's it. That's the play for right now. But like you said, when these trees kind of grow in, that's probably going to go away. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure how long. I that don't know will take. what you're going to do when these trees grow in. You pretty much got to throw. I don't even know, honestly. Yeah, little... it's a problem for another day. Let's just worry about uh, today. We're yeah, that, fine. Yeah, no, hit one of those little trees. That looked like a good shot too, off the off the off the tee. So just outside of another long putt, mm -hmm. hits the long putt flag. He hit the long putt flag again. Yeah, he hit I think three or four of them in this round. It was just that's unfortunate. Yeah. See, that was almost the same line too, and he he just snuck under that branch. That was good. I mean, that's essentially what you want to do. Is it it really you maybe played a little bit were left than where they went but this is still right in Noah's range for sure. He's a really good long circle one putter. Yep. Bang. Oh, did he pick up his mini? 
That's long putt, isn't it? Yep. He did not pick it up. He went I, to go he, pick it up. He didn't. That's so sick. If he I, did, he win long putt because I'm actually now I'm mad about that. I think that was my putt too. That was actually Josh Taylor's at the time. Um, Josh Taylor snagged it from you, and then he snagged it. That's from Josh. right. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That will become relevant later. No spoilers yet. But just, what? Yeah, it will become relevant later. All right. Well, you kind of spoiled it for me then. I didn't spoil it for you. You don't know. You don't even know. As we have Ian tapping in here, easy peasy from him. We got Luke with this incredibly challenging putt here. Ooh. Spectacular. Ooh. <laughs> that almost kicked out though. I hate those. A, a lot of those guys that putt with nose down. It always looks like it's gonna kick back out. I I can't tell you how many of I play a lot with Andy obviously because we were roommates for a good portion of the time. How many of his putts from short distance when their nose down look like they're gonna sp like spike right back out of the the basket? They don't quite though. Yeah, yeah stay in a lot. Hole as much as I want them to. Right. Hole 14, 157 feet. Double Mando here. Um, this hole's short enough where you can actually jump putt it. Uh, you'll see a lot of people still do that. Or you'll throw probably a backhand of some kind. Um, just kind of, just barely to the right of that gap. There is OB behind the basket, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone in this field necessarily go really deep. Yeah. Long jump putt. Interesting. Yep. This is actually as short it is, as it is. It does play kind of difficult because you really got to commit to one side of that tree or the other side. Yeah. So I was trying to play like a forehand flex, but I think I, I think Noah's play is the is the preferred play. Yep. I even, agree. Even Andy going with a little backhand putter. Now I'm now I'm shaking my. I did I miss this? I missed it probably one round. I don't know if I got. It. I think I got it the second round. That's yep. pretty much as good as you want to do it. Yeah. That disc is really sick too. That that ABR three that he it has. It's so it's, gross. It's so swirly. I think this is either a polecat or an AVR3 sit. from sit, 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 sit. from Ian there. Oh, that's his polecat. I remember I, I felt, think that is his polecat. He let me feel it like a uh, second round, and I, just, I literally almost threw up. It just feels so – I hate how polecats feel. But. but he throws them really well. He does he throw them really them. I don't understand – Sometimes, from Luke, sometimes it just works, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you just have that disc, like you know, you'll have a player that's like, you know, my favorite disc is a disc is a bullfrog or I something, don't, right? I don't like uh, Garrett Gerthy with the Sonics. I, I don't get it. The Sonic feels it's. You might as well just be throwing an ultimate disc. It is an ultimate disc in disc golf plastic. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> Good putt from Ian there. That's a that's one of those those tester range putts. Really, we got a spectacular back nine so far here. As it looks like a lot of green. Yes, tons of it. These guys are attacking the course as we're getting headed into the most difficult hole next, uh, hole fifteen. So uh, these guys are trying to capitalize in every hole that they can so far. Um, Luke with an unfortunate three there, but he is still right in the mix. There is only a stroke down from both Andy and Noah who are playing really, really well right now as we go into hole 15, 494 feet. This is the hardest hole in the course, mostly because it still is a par 3. Yeah. It, it's not changed it's, into a par 4. It, the, to make this a par 4, you'd almost have to put it like the basket up to the left or up to the right. Or add OB. Or uh, add OB, yeah. I mean, it, it really is just throw it as hard as you can and yep. then just get up and down or have like a long circle 2 putt. There might be some, there, There's a couple guys in our field that can get the the whole distance mm -hmm. um i think the only person who took something because everyone birdied or parted i think the only person who took a more than that's a bomb this is huge yeah more than a par was accidentally scooted into the road deep uh on their approach i will the yeah, the other one guy that i played with had some he was putting back and forth but yeah there's the deep he went deep you think I, somebody went no, deep? I think someone's approach shot went deep. Oh, gotcha. On that on that shot there, but I guess that is OB long, isn't it? Yep. Ian, or, uh, I'm sorry, not Ian. That's Marweed with a backhand rip, uh, just a little right. Hit those yeah, trees that's, on the right side. That's that's the thing is if you're trying to get that big distance, you got to get that flex. And so those trees on the right do come into play a little bit, especially if you're trying to put it under the basket. That's a little low out of Ian, I think. This is kind of Ian's like awkward distance i would say i think he's a solid 450 thrower and can push closer mm -hmm. to this distance but it kind of needs like the that ideal whole, throw yeah i kind of like everything he needs out of his disc he needs to get that and so he's just a little short there but he's a good putter and he'll have a chance at that turn and, yeah and i think luke's kind of in a similar power description with uh he's got Ian. really good like like form i think as he kind of grows yes and gets a little bit more puts a little more meat on his bones he's going to be He's gonna be throw, probably pushing like five fifty. Yeah, he like I said when he's 
Um, he's only 14 right now. When, can you imagine when he's 18 and kind of fills in? And yeah. He's, he's going to be like Kyle. <laughs> Eat some sandwiches, Luke. He's growing. He's gonna. He's got basketball season coming up, so he's got a. He's he's gonna be bulking up here in a minute. Good run from him. Well, that's a that's it's gonna be a tester. See, that's when you when the ground when the disc hits the ground with Heiser. I see a lot of like roll, roll action. So that's why I like to put like Ooh. when you have a little flat and it hits the ground where you don't you don't go long the basket. That was a good run from Ian though. Ian thought he had that. This is a great birdie look from Noah. That's Can a he smash. Capitalize? Get in it. Bang. How many twos were there? There are two twos on the day on this hole. Noah being one of them, and the other one being Bart. Bart, yeah, he throws pretty far. I watched Bart birdie it too. He smashed it uh, to the left of that tree, hit in front of the tree. I think he was twenty Ooh. feet to the left. Good putt. That oh. was good thing. Those are beadless. <laughs> Luke here, good, good save. Yep, really just trying to make sure you're not walking away with another bogey here if you're Luke, just because. This is probably. Besides this and this and eight, these are the two holes where you're like, okay, the, so sixteen down is what I'm aiming for. Then, yep, that's really like your perfect round, right? Without messing up those two holes, as we head into hole sixteen now, another par three, two hundred and twenty-five feet. This one had to play pretty easy, right? Yeah, this one definitely plays as one of the easier holes, uh, almost point eight under par. You're just trying to throw a straight putter, maybe straight stable putter, just kind of through this double gap that the drone's going through, or go on the right side of that. Yeah. Yep, and there is OB technically behind it. But again, for these players at this level, you can, you know, going deep, having that distance control that's is pretty a, routine. Yeah, that's a pretty big miss if you miss that. If you go long left, and this that's is, pretty much it. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. A little bit of a putt still. Yeah, I don't think he got as much ground action as he was expecting but with the leaves. But like you, you had mentioned earlier that the roots kind of get hidden, so you kind of expect it, and then you get up there and mm -hmm. get knocked you, around. You should get more skip off of the leaves, but then, yeah, if you hit something that's below that you can't see. Like this is probably his pole cat. I don't know. No, this is his AVR three, the one AVR with the stamp. Thing. Yeah, that's not. I like those huckle up stamps. This is looking good. Yep, that's pretty much. Yeah, I I think the going a right of that tree, you take if you go right of those trees, you're taking the kind of the luck factor out by trying to split the gap up the middle. Yep. So I think that's I think everyone's trying to put it like 15 feet on the right side. Yeah, you see a lot of people going right there. I think that's his zone again. Ooh, that that is not. There's no way that's a zone. That thing I, is so straight. I think that's a zone. That could be wrong. It might be a challenger. I think his dad throws challengers backhand. Uh, I I could be wrong. It could be a different type of plastic. But I think that was his jawbreaker Get in zone. It. Ooh, good putt. It didn't even matter. He still had it. Yep. Yeah. He's just gonna keep. He's got a really good spin putt. Yes, he for sure he does. Noah here, keep the run oh, going and that. Oh, yeah. He I almost know had there a perfect was, back nine. Yeah. I know there was some some wind that was picking up, I think, at the end of this first round. You could see it when Noah was on the pad. He had a good wind behind his back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one did. So you want to, yeah, and something like that with that tailwind like that, you want to throw something a little bit less stable so it doesn't, the wind doesn't exaggerate the, the stability of it. And no one knows he's letting one go there. Yeah, that, that feels bad. He's back to... I mean, that was... It's not the shortest putt, but those... You, it, it, at this point, and, and in this course especially, you really got to make all those circle one putts. For sure. Heading into hole 17 now, 271 feet. Very similar to the previous hole. Uh, OB's a little more in play here with, mm -hmm. with it being on the right side, so you see someone with a forehand, if they pick something uh, with too sharp of an edge, might skip over there, or if you accidentally pull it over because there's a headwind or something. Um, really, you're just trying to throw something stable... Uh, or straight right at this. Got a bit of a headwind though, so probably on the stable side of stuff. Yeah, I think it was kind of like a cross headwind. That's really, you know, that's, that's a good fine. shot. The I have seen some people kind of go long and be behind that tree, and it makes it a little bit awkward. You got to really pick one of the one side or the other side. This should be pretty routine for Ian. He he's really oh kind of hung out a little bit right. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a headwind on this one because that did kind of that did kind of stay right a little bit longer. But that, I mean, that's parked, yep. so obviously nothing wrong with that. But it looks like he's got some. It is kind of tight on that right side. I, I guess I didn't really realize it when I was playing because I, I think I was on. I tried to commit my shot left left more than I did right. Mm -hmm. But it, that does that OB does come into play pretty quick on that right side. That was a good shot from Luke. For I think sure. he's gonna have a little bit of an awkward obstructed look. Noah as well. Go I think on. he throws a buzz. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what this yellow disc is. I'm, uh, it's I'm, really stable, though. Is it? Yeah. That's a lot of hyzer, too. Yeah, that was a little low. I think that wind kind of pushed it right. Mm-hmm. It looked like it. I think it was like a cross, cross headwind. Might have been trying to kind of plan that wind and mm-hmm. just didn't quite get the action he was looking for. Big tester here from C2. Can he go two for two? Not quite. He's got to tap in three, though. Yeah, that was kind of a weird look. Yeah, I guess this is not a problem with Andy's. Shouldn't be anyways. See, Ooh, I always thought catch. this. I always thought the same thing, but he missed hole three, which shouldn't have been a problem either. But he's, yeah, he's that, in was group a, now. that was kind of you, you when you're starting your round out the first couple holes. Luke here, just making sure he's going to tap this in. He's still in contention here, but he needs to convert on these last couple holes to make sure that he's in a good position. As you mentioned, checking the live scoring the whole day, everyone's yep. within a couple strokes of each other. Yeah, I mean, I think 11, 11 and twelve down. There was there was a ton of scores at that at that right range. at that level. So with the last couple of holes, people are trying to sneak in that last birdie or two to see if they can kind of stretch themselves into that feature uh, or that lead position there. And yeah, we have like looking at the scores right now. We literally have th- three eleven downs and one twelve mm-hmm. like this. <laughs> Like, everyone is very, very tightly contesting one another right now. Yeah, one thing I noticed at this tournament, that the ratings were very tough. I mean, I, I think 11 down for the first round was, like, 990, I want I think that's what it finished out to. Well, and we'll the, find out in a minute. Yeah. At the end of this hole, at hole 18, par 3, 242 feet. Uh, this is, again, one of those... This is equally as hard as the previous hole. Um, same number of birdies. Or, I'm sorry, one more birdie on the previous hole. Uh, but, uh... Really, you're just trying to throw something. Forehand here is a fine play. I'm a little surprised he was throwing a Firebird, to be honest. I didn't think... I think he was trying to get that, that ground action. Just, it's just I, if so you, If he's going to swing it... I think he's trying to sh- swing it wide, like around that tree on the left, and try to get that skip back. Mm-hmm. I like Ian's play, maybe a little lower and a little more right. Yeah, he kind of misfired this high, but he still is probably circles right, edge. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to not be circles edge on this hole. Unless you miss, like, low. Yeah. Even then, the, the, this is pretty hard packed. I think you're getting a lot of skip on this one. That Not looks sure like it's a is. zone. Yeah, that, he just put a little too much turn on it. I think he puts a little more hyzer on it. He probably gets that angle back. Yep. I think he really needed that one. His rating's a lot higher, so it's harder to get on lead card. Throw yeah, that's pretty much the play right there, unless that hits something. Yeah, that's sit, 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 sit. I think that's what Mari was trying to do, but it's a little wider, so it kind of a little more right action mm-hmm. than back action, but... Noah's going to have a look there. Even Luke here has a look, like you said, but this is definitely contested with the tree a little bit. He's going to have to putt around it. And off they hit the, the top? Off the top That's of the basket. So That's a heartbreaker. That's a great run, but you're right. It's just not... Those feel, that. those feel the worst. Oh, a little low for Ian, a little bit. You just got to get that arm extended to the basket. And that's... That's the tough thing with that range is you really got to emphasize extending that arm. See how Andy, like, extends that arm to the basket? He's yep. really getting the disc towards the basket and that was a really good putt Ian uh, doing I don't know everything I think every round I've ever played with Ian he does one sneaky quick tap in mm-hmm. and uh, I've gotten him every single time I've been to record it but I caught him walking away with that tap in right as I just <laughs> missed it but I got him walking away at least I so I'm going to count as a win for me still I'm seeing all of Ian's tap ins I think he's just trying to keep me on my toes well yeah that was a really good putt from Noah. Yeah, and he's had a solid back nine here. Two holes I didn't expect him to par necessarily, but he is just... But still... He got that bonus birdie on 15. For sure, so and that eradicated one of them. A, yeah, that kind of makes up for one of them. I think the back nine plays easier than the front nine, in my opinion. I think you really only got 15 is like the, the quote-unquote hard hole. But, yeah... That was a good little comeback from Luke and some really good scores. Uh, 13, 12, and then two 11s. Yeah, everyone's there. Marweed is technically tied for first place right now. We'll see the standings in a minute, but so much green going on here. These guys are tearing it up. Like one you red. said, yeah, they're, the, the one red, Luke's going to probably, you know, wish he had that one back for sure. Yeah. But taking a look here at the front nine scores, like you had mentioned, a um, 43 there, which is 11 down, is rated 994. Uh, the, the other guys up there tied for 13 down three of them we'll go one 12 down so we'll have andy and noah come back for the next round uh congrats to also justin larson for acing hole 14 during this round and i heard that behind, yeah. that was behind me and it just they didn't even react he was just he everyone was just like wow nice shot and that was it <laughs> it was uh, 
That was the only ace, wasn't it? Was that the only ace on the day? Just just for this round. I, I don't know about the other fields, but thanks again to our Patreon supporters, and we'll see you guys for the second round.